In the first story of tonight's episode, Colm is heading north to see how Brexit has both affected and played its part in the seed potato industry here in Ireland. Although its name may be deceptive, seed potatoes aren't actually seeds at all. Instead, they're simply potato tubers that are used to generate new potatoes that are genetically identical to the parent potato. But where do these come from? And how has Brexit affected the seed potato sector here in Ireland? I've travelled to County Loud to visit the Lochran family farm, who are one of Ireland's largest seed potato producers, to find out the answers. Pre-Brexit, we imported maybe 60% of our seed potatoes from Scotland. Now that, that avenue is no longer open to, to growers. So it's been up to the seed industry in this country to increase production. On our own farm, we've increased by 300% in the last year. There is some new entrance into seed growing in, in this country. We've also existing growers that have increased production as well. And over the next couple of years, I would hope to see more enter, enter the industry. Is there anywhere else people can get their seed potato from? There is an option to go to Europe, mainly in Holland or France. It's under the same European classification scheme, uh, certification scheme as we are. But every country has its own problems. The Dutch probably have different pests and diseases that there is a chance of importing into this country. Disease-free material is really important for good seed potatoes, and micropropagation is the only way to bulk that up. You don't do that here on the farm. No, we don't do that here, um, and we have to get our certified seed from somewhere the same way as everyone else does. David gets his seed from Topps Farm, the government potato propagation centre that's located in Raffo in County Donegal. When David orders his seed, we go to this reservoir. It's made up of little, what we call, microplants. All the material in there are virus tested and free from disease. They're free from quarantine diseases and our everyday diseases. So you're ensuring that the grower is starting off with clean material. They're multiplying up, cutting the little plantlets at each node until we know we have enough microplants to plant in the tunnel to give David the required mini tubers that he requires. He's able to propagate what we give him for about four or five seasons. At that stage, he is sufficient quantity to supply his customers with potatoes that have been grown for the table. So David can turn these two and a half thousand tubers into millions. Yeah, and our role basically is to give him the clean starting off material. But since Brexit, David and his team haven't changed what they grow. They've just changed the amount they grow. Two of the most popular varieties of potato in Ireland are the rooster and cares pink. So if Jerry's given us 2,000 this year, hopefully we'll have 14,000 next year. There's usually a multiply, multiplication factor of seven. The following year, we'll plant them again. 14,000 by seven is 98,000. And the following year, we'll multiply them again. And the following year, we'll multiply them again. Again, on an average of seven each time. So by the time it comes to five field generations, we'll have built up a substantial enough commercial quantity of seed potatoes to sell to an eating potato farmer. So if more growers get into it, there is the possibility of Ireland to be like self-sufficient in seed potato supply. You need seed to grow food. Um, we have the capabilities here to grow all of our own seed. We have a lot of good growers, and we have a lot of good areas of the country where we could grow more seed. Importing our seed potatoes isn't the way forward, in my opinion. So the more we can grow here, the better it is for Irish food security and the environment. I think so, yes. Yeah, there's low food miles. Uh, we have, we, have, we have an ideal climate for it, uh, we should be producing the seed here.